what I what a preacher means when he says uh, when he pauses and puts special emphasis on the word the world. It means that because Adam and Eve sinned and all of the human race fell under the curse of sin and we are born with a sinful nature, it means that by this point now with 7 billion people on planet Earth, the world is a sinful place run by sinful people and there is a system out there that is opposed to what God Wants. Now, of course, we love the people in the world. We love people. That is our calling here at Enon Baptist Church and for all Christians. The, the greatest commandment, and you can ask Jesus himself because someone in the Bible did, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then what was given as, you know, Jesus had to say, and the second one is like to it. So just because that's the first and foremost most important commandment, don't forget the rest of it, which is summed up in love your neighbor as yourself. So we don't hate Kansas City. We don't hate Holden. We don't need to rail against uh, politics and Democrats and Republicans and, and, and Russian collusion and all of this kind of stuff. We don't need to hate the world, but we do understand that we are pilgrims and sojourners and strangers in a land that is not our own as Christians. Amen. And, and, and for a long time, it was easy to be a proud Christian and a proud American. And forces are trying to uh, make it to where that's not quite so. Uh, but, but it kind of does us a favor because it helps us see that we were never Americans at heart. No matter how good it was, the country of America, we are first and foremost citizens of another kingdom. Amen. We've been talking about the children of God, the Israelites, the, the Hebrews, the Jews living in exile in the in in the empire of Babylon. And, and under Daniel, he, they were still in exile when it changed from the Babylonian Empire to when the Medo-Persian Empire came in and conquered and and there was a change of power, in fact, and then under the Persian Empire to continue our story. And we're doing Bible stories so that everybody can learn. Uh, if, if you don't know much about the Bible, you can at least learn it on a child's level with the Bible stories. Learn on the Bible stories. Uh, Daniel faithfully as a servant of God and as a servant of the empire faithfully served both when it came to whether he was going to worship, uh, serve God or not, he would never compromise his service to God. Amen. When the service to the evil empire started to interfere with his service to God, Daniel chose to go with God. But he was always polite, respectful, and honoring of the evil empire that he worked for. We have several examples of this including way back to the forefathers, someone that Daniel would have thought was ancient history just as much as we do, Joseph. Joseph lived and served in Pharaoh's court, never giving up his faith in the one true God, but faithfully serving an evil empire. Uh, and, and Daniel had a lot of parallels with that, faithfully serving the Babylonian empire. The Persians also gave him a job, and we talked about Daniel yesterday, but uh, last week, I mean, but now we come to a story that actually we're kind of getting out of our timeline a little bit. Uh, this still happens in exile. But at some point, at a time before this, the Jews have had a chance to go home to Israel. And sometimes we make a big deal out of that because there's also a nation of Israel today. And many Jews have gone to live in the modern day national state of Israel. But... Esther and her family, they don't live in Israel and they don't live in Babylon. They live in the capital of the Persian Empire. And maybe you don't know how important the Persians were, but well, I won't get into all of that necessarily, but they ruled the world until the Greeks came along. In fact, Daniel had a dream about the Greeks conquering the Persian Empire and all of that came to pass just as Daniel had prophesied. But in the Persian Empire, there were a lot of Jews who decided not to go back to Jerusalem and not to go back to the land of Israel. Why? Well, we built our lives here for over 70 years. We have a business here. We have a vineyard here. We have all of these things. God is blessing us in exile. We don't have to move home to the desert land of Israel and try to irrigate it and make crops grow. We got things going good for us right here. And so Esther is 
a gal whose family has stayed. This is possibly around a hundred years after the Hebrews first went into exile. Now, there is a complaint about the Bible that some people make that is entirely not valid. Okay? That complaint is that it is all about white men. Number one, I don't think there's any white people in the Bible. It all happens in the Mediterranean and Asia and Northern Africa. And Luke is a Greek physician who writes more of the New Testament than anybody else. He might have been the one white brother in the bunch. He might have been the only raisin in the, uh, the only grain of rice in the bag of raisins. You know what I mean? There was probably a, there was probably a whole a uh, grand rainbow of black all through the shades of tan and brown all the way up to white throughout the whole Bible. Some people think Moses was black. I kind of doubt it. I don't know what color the Egyptians were. I don't know. They conquered Ethiopia at that time. They were definitely black. And that's all we know, right? So this message is for the whole world. And it's not just for men. And the Bible thinks, I mean, uh, some people think that the Bible teaches that the God of the Bible is this angry, misogynist. From, verse, from the first chapter, God made man and woman in his own image. You, and this, this has been standard teaching. In fact, many cultures that have accepted Christianity, you see a lot of misogyny just go right out the window. Women are no longer treated as cattle. Women are image bearers of God, just like men. And the argument can certainly be made that the Bible teaches separate roles for men and women, but not separate value, not separate work. And, and, uh, and there are two books of the Bible named for female leaders. Ruth was a good woman. She led her own household and her own life very well. But this time, we get a queen. So, why, i got to ask you, ladies, why be a Disney princess when you can be queen of all Persia? That's what I want to know. Don't settle for being the Disney princess. My wife loves that stuff and she watches Dancing with the Stars and they, and they have Disney night because Disney wants to remind you that they own ABC and Dancing with the Stars and the Avengers and Star Wars. And you can almost hear Mickey walking in the room. Da, 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 da. Ominous music. I'm going to own all of you someday. But it doesn't bother my wife like it does me that, you know, there goes Iron Man and then there's marching um, stormtroopers and everything else and lightsabers and there's Disney night. Oh, my gosh. And all, but, but what do all the female contestants? I love it. Disney princess. I've always wanted to be a Disney princess. I challenge you today to not settle for being a Disney princess. Learn to be queen from Esther. Okay. Okay.